In this exercise, we're being asked to compute this definite integral of 2 plus the absolute value of 2x minus 5 on the interval from 0 to 4. Now, in an earlier video, we already discussed how to do definite integrals with absolute value functions. Um, basically, if the vertex of that absolute value function, which these guys do have a vertex, they kind of have a V-shaped, if that vertex is in the middle of your interval of integration, then you would integrate from zero up to the vertex as one region, plus, and then integrate from that vertex up to four for the second region, and basically break these into two separate regions. So if your, you know, your region looks something like this, just as an example, you would integrate from the vertex, uh, from the first x value up to the vertex, and then from the vertex on the rest of the way uh, of the interval and basically create these two regions that you add together. So now here's the big question though. Here's the point of, of this particular video. Sometimes it's not clear where the vertex is. And so without a graph or without our calculator or something, how are we supposed to find where the vertex is? Well, basically the vertex happens where 2x minus 5 equals 0, because 0 is kind of your dividing line between positive quantities, in which case the absolute value would leave it alone and just remain 2x minus 5, versus the negative quantities, in which case you would have to change the sign with those terms being negative. So um, if you were willing to just kind of use your common sense a little bit, you could just set 2x minus 5 equal to 0 and go that route. But I'm going to make it a little bit more clear for, for everybody here. Um, I'm going to do it slightly differently in this example. Um, we're going to set 2x minus 5 to be greater than or equal to 0. And then we're also going to set 2x minus 5 to be strictly less than zero. So we'll not only see where the vertex is, but we'll also have an idea of which one to leave alone in, the, in our new integrand and which one we need to make negative in our new uh, other integrand. So here we go. If we solve for x here, we'd have 2x is greater than or equal to 5. And so x is greater than, than or equal to 5 halves. And then on the other side, we have 2x is um, strictly less than 5. So x is less than five halves. So if we were going to take a shortcut here, if you're, you know, if you're okay doing this, if we had just take, took two x minus five and set it equal to zero, that certainly would have been quicker. Obviously we would have gotten five halves, but here's the reason I didn't do that for this example. Um, just knowing that the vertex is at five halves, it doesn't really tell us which, uh, basically what to do with your new integrands. And so these, it'll become more clear and I'll, I'll explain that in just a second. So it's pretty clear the, um, the new vertex is at five halves. So we're going to do one integral from zero to five halves dx plus the integral from five halves on the rest of the way to four dx. Now, now I can make sense of why I didn't just set that um, term inside the absolute values to zero. See, for the x's greater than five halves right here, for any x's past 2.5, then this term right here is already positive, right? So the absolute value of something that's already positive, it'll just stay positive. So this tells me past five halves, my integrand, namely on this interval here from five halves the rest of the way, is just going to be 2x minus 5. All right? But on the other hand, for the x's that are before five halves, the quantity inside, absolute, inside the absolute values is uh, negative, is negative, which means I'm going to have to change its sign by hand. I'm going to have to change its sign. So this guy uh, over here for this interval would be negative the quantity 2x minus 5, okay? So, so that the sign changes. Now, let's not forget as well, we also have this extra 2 plus in, in the integrand, so we need to tack those on there. I probably should have written that earlier. So here we have 2, and here we have 2 plus this quantity as well. So 2 plus this quantity, and 2, you could say plus the negative quantity, but we'll, we'll just leave it minus there. So, um, Past five halves, the absolute values are irrelevant, so I basically just drop them. But before five halves, I need to manually change the sign of this term. Not of the whole expression, this two doesn't depend on the absolute value, but I do need to change the sign of those terms. So let me rewrite that just to clean things up a bit. This will be the integral from zero to five halves. 
of 2 minus 2x plus 5. 2 minus 2x plus 5. So that would make 7. 2 and 5 make 7 minus 2x. And then the integral from 5 halves up to 4 of 2 plus 2x minus 5. 2 plus 2x minus 5. So we get 2x minus 3. That's from 2 minus 5 dx. All right, so now I have two individual integrals to do. Two individual integrals we're going to compute. All right, the, um, the first one here, we take uh, 7x minus x squared bracket from 0 to 5 halves. And just so things don't get overly cumbersome, I think I might just go ahead and finish this one out, and then we'll come back and do the other one in, in just a second. All right, plug in a 5 halves. So 7 times 5 halves would be 35 over 2 minus, plug in uh, 5 halves squared, that would be 25 over 4, 25 over 4. So let's see, 70 over 4, so 35 over 2, 70 over 4 minus 25 over 4 would be 45 over 4. All right, so that's our first term, but we're not done yet. Okay, I'll change colors for the second example here. Still have to do the second integral. Okay, integrate 2x minus 3. We get x squared minus 3x, bracket from 5 halves up to 4. Okay, we'll group those. Okay, um, let's plug in a 4. Plug in a 4. 4 squared is 16, 4 times 3 is 12, 16 minus 12 is 4, and then we're going to subtract, oh, okay, let's see if we can do this in our head here, um, I might need to do some scratch work up here, um, 5 halves squared is 25 over 4, minus 3 times 5 halves would be 15 halves, or 30 over 4, that's the same thing as 15 halves. So this net total would give you negative 5 over 4. So in total, we'd actually have a plus 5 over 4 from the minus the negative 5 over 4. So in case you didn't catch all that algebra, you might want to replay that portion of the video a couple times. But I'm just trying to chew through that algebra quickly here. Okay, so 4 plus 5 over 4, um, that'll be 16 over 4 plus 5 over 4 which would be 21 over 4. And then final answer, we would get 66 over 4 or 33 over 2. Okay, so a lot of algebra there. I didn't really intend for all that, that algebra to be quite that messy, but, um, but we made it. We made it. And so let's, in summary, what did we just do there? What, what was all this stuff? Well, we had a, an absolute value integral, but the difficult thing was, was we did not know where the vertex was. So we actually had to manually find the vertex by um, taking what was inside the absolute value and setting it to be greater than zero or less than zero. But notice, it, it, this will always give you the same quantity here. Um, you'll just have x is larger than a quantity or smaller than a quantity. So if, if you're pretty good at algebra um, and, and your logic is pretty solid on this stuff, you could have just set 2x minus 5 equal to zero, but then the danger would have been not knowing what your new integrands uh, were, were going to be. So that, that would be the danger there. The way I did it, it was much safer because we know that for the x's past 5 halves, the quantity was positive, and so you would just leave the integrand what it originally was without absolute values. And for the x's less than 5 halves, being that this quantity was going to be negative, we had to change its sign by making it negative so that, in effect, a double negative would turn it positive like an absolute value would be, uh, <clears throat> like an absolute value would do. Um, so the whole point was write this equivalent expression, but without absolute value. So I hope that wasn't too confusing. A uh, lot of algebra here, a lot of theory and stuff. So if you have any questions on anything that I did here, um, leave me some feedback and um, either myself or somebody can kind of clarify uh, what in the world just went on here in this example. But um, once we had these two individual integrals, we computed them 
independent of one another. You can kind of follow the chain down. And then ultimately we got these final two quantities here. So just in case you didn't pick up on this, this part right here in blue, that was the area from one of the triangular regions, right? Like so. And then this area here was the area from the other triangular regions. And so when we added them, then that basically just put those two areas together and, and totaled them up. So we got <clears throat> 33 over, over 2.